lecture 12, part 2. In part 1 of this lecture, we saw that we can calculate the energy cost of the process uh, by looking at the, the energy requirement of pot and cold utilities, and we can use the area targeting to calculate the capital cost of the process. Okay, and the composite curves provide these uh, information to us. So by looking at the composite curve in terms of its energy demand, we can calculate the energy targets, but at the same time, by looking at the area of heat exchanger uh, in terms of the, the overlap between a hot composite curve and a cold composite curve, we can get the necessary information in terms of area target of the process. So let's talk about the area targeting a little bit more in detail. So here, what we have, we have um, a temperature enthalpy diagram and we have the hot and cold composite curve. So here we have the hot composite curve uh, going at a higher temperature to a low temperature and then we have the cold composite curve going in the opposite direction. We have our cold utility and we have our hot utility of the system. Okay. So now if you look at this um if this if you look at this uh, enthalpy diagram or, or composite uh, diagram you can see that we can divide this composite curve into different enthalpy intervals okay so we have for example from this stream to this stream where it is changing slope we can call it one interval then we have a changing slope again we have the second interval and then again, we have change in slope of this part. So we have the third interval or fourth interval. And then again, change of slope of this line. So we have um, another interval. So wherever this any of these two streams is changing slope, we can break the interval, um, break the total uh, system into different enthalpy intervals. Okay. Now, if you look at this particular enthalpy interval, so we we know what is the, the heat requirement of this interval from uh, the delta H diagram. So we know what is Q, Q, K, the K is the interval, Q is the heat requirement of the system. And then we also know that what are the temperatures of these process streams, okay? Because we are at temperature enthalpy diagram. And if you look more closely, you can see that the temperature profile of this interval represent the temperature profile of a counter current um, heat exchanger as you discuss in, in process heat transfer in, in year one. And it means that by knowing the value of these four temperatures, we can calculate what is the log mean driving force of this interval. And if we do that, we can calculate what is the area required for this particular or, or the heat exchangers uh, area required in this particular interval because we know the value of qk that is the the heat requirement of the of the interval we know the delta t lm that we calculated for from this terminal temperatures and then we also know what is the overall um, heat transfer coefficient of this process or these streams available so we can calculate the area of this interval but the problem is that that for this whole process, the value of u is not constant. So this interval has a value of u, let's call it uk. Then you have another value of u for this interval, another value of u for this interval. So each of these intervals uh, might have a different value of u. And as such, the area and the heating requirement of this uh, interval will be different. Okay, so if we want to calculate the the total area of this whole hand network, we need to calculate the areas of each interval and then sum them up at the end. Okay, so let's look at it in a bit more detail. So, okay, so this is uh, just to remind you how we can calculate log mean temperature difference. Uh, this is again from process heat transfer. So, this is let's say for interval K, we have a hot stream. Uh, or a, uh, a composite hot stream going from a temperature TH1 to TH2, and then the composite cold stream is going from TC1 to TC2. 
and again if you take the temperature difference on one end of this heat exchanger and then the temperature difference on the other end of heat exchanger and then you take the difference between these two temperatures and take a log of the ratio of these two temperatures the two end temperatures we can calculate what is the average driving force in this whole uh, exchanger and here again another thing to point out that here we are looking at this heat exchanger system as a counter current heat exchanger system okay so we uh, saw that we can calculate the um, the temperature uh, log mean temperature difference we can calculate the um, the area of this vertical interval but because we have multiple hot streams and cold stream present in in this interval because if you remember that we draw this composite curve by looking at all the common uh, all the streams involved in a particular temperature interval so this one stream actually uh, rep this composite hot stream represent all the hot streams available in this particular temperature interval and similarly the bottom curve represent all the uh, cold stream present in this temperature interval okay so it means that if you want to calculate the area of this heat exchanger we need to look at the the um, the heat requirement or the heat available uh, from a particular hot or cold stream and then looking at its individual heat transfer coefficient okay because we if we know the individual heat transfer coefficients we can calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient okay so in this equation what we are looking is the heat contribution coming from different hot streams so i is for uh, a stream um, a particular heat stream in um, and k is the interval here okay so we are looking at the heat requirement of a hot uh, sorry heat coming from a hot stream uh, in interval k and in this interval we can have a total of i hot streams okay similarly we are looking at individual heat requirement of a cold stream that is j in interval k and in this total interval in this uh, interval k we can have a total number of j cold streams so if you take the heat of a hot stream and a cold stream and then sum them up you get the overall heat requirement of the interval and then i showed you in the previous slide how we can calculate the delta t lm and then we can calculate the area requirement of this particular interval okay and if we want to now calculate the overall area of this whole network we need to do the same thing like we did in the previous slide here for this particular interval we need to sum the same we need to do the same thing for this interval and then this interval and it means that for each particular interval we do um, an interval area and if you have let's say in total k intervals like in this case k capital k is seven so we have seven intervals and if you sum up the area of each of these intervals uh, from going from one to seven, you get the total network area of this hand system. Okay. So we talked about how we can calculate the area of the network by using this equation here. So let's now look how we can use this equation with an example. Okay. So here we have uh, the process streams available in the form of this table, and this. Uh, is actually a problem that was discussed in lecture seven when you were talking about heat exchanger network design. So this is the same uh, set of data. So here you have the streams with their target supply and target temperatures and their heat load. And then you are also known now for this particular heat stream or, or cold stream, you know their heat transfer coefficients, the film heat transfer coefficients, that is the HI and HJ. Okay. You also know from let's say table uh, problem table algorithm. You also know what are the heating and cooling requirement of these streams. Okay, so so we know how much steam is required and how much cooling uh, is required. Okay, and if now you uh, look at this uh, for example table, we can calculate the composite curves uh, by using 
the temperature of hot and cold streams or better actually we can draw the balanced composite curves as we discussed in the previous lecture so this is what uh, is the balanced composite curve of this process so here for example in this uh, here you can see that here you have a composite curve but the utilities cold and hot utilities are not included in this composite curve while when you draw a balanced composite curve the hot and cold utilities are incorporated inside this um, composite curve so here you have the the cold utility of the process that comes from the, the the cooling water that is included here and at the top you have the hot utility of the system and that is incorporated in the hot composite curve okay and the reason we are doing that is because if you look just at the composite curve and try to calculate the area uh, of the hand network the area of the hand network will only include the process to process heat exchangers okay but if you want to calculate the overall uh, area of the process it means that you want to calculate the area required for the coolers you want to know the area required for the heaters and the process heat exchangers you need to use the balanced composite curve because then all the streams are uh, available for you to calculate the total area so you also see here that uh, the hot and cold utility requirement of this balanced composite curve is zero because you have already included the cold utility and hot utilities inside these composite curves okay and then again uh, as i explained in the previous uh, slide that we break this composite curve in different uh, enthalpy intervals so we are looking at vertical heat transfer and how we do that is that wherever the slope of this composite curve um, either hot or cold composite curve is changing we make one interval so for example going from a temperature of 40 degrees to a temperature of let's say 80 degrees we have one slope so that is one interval then we have this long interval but then because the slope of the composite curve here is changing so we are actually breaking into another interval then we have again a change of slope so that is uh, interval number five again we have a change of slope here and we have another interval and then again a change of slope slope and similarly we include all the intervals in our uh, balanced composite curve okay and if you look at a particular interval uh, you know what is the 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 heat requirement of that interval because we know that from the x axis because delta h and then we also know what are the different temperature uh, the terminal temperatures of this interval so we know for example what is the temperature here what is the temperature here what is the temperature here and what is the temperature here okay so if you know all these uh, information you can actually calculate uh, what is the area requirement of that interval okay and in this figure we have converted the information from a balanced composite curve in the form of in, uh, enthalpy intervals and stream data so these are different uh, enthalpy intervals in terms of their temperature so going from 20 to 40 and then you have um, uh, uh, another interval going from temperature 25 to temperature 80 so similarly you have different intervals uh, enthalpy intervals and then you also can see on this enthalpy intervals that what streams are are taking part in a particular interval so that like say cooling water is going from a temperature of 20 degrees centigrade to 30 degrees centigrade it means that this stream is contributing to interval 7 and interval 6 and similarly stream 1 is going from a temperature of 40 to 200 degrees centigrade so it means that it is involved in temperature 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay. And this is important because when we are looking at what kind of streams are available um, in an interval, because we need to calculate the heat duty um, provided by the hot stream in that interval and the heat duty uh, uh, received by the cold stream in that interval. Okay. And at the bottom, you can see again looking at where these intervals are in the temperature enthalpy diagram. Uh, 
for example here you can see that it starts from a zero and then the first interval goes around a value of six second interval goes around a value of uh, 12 for example so here you can see that these numbers come from uh, reading these intervals uh, on the enthalpy axis so for each of these intervals we know what are the terminal temperatures as i explained in the previous slides and based on this interval uh, terminal temperature we can calculate an average value of delta t lm okay by using the equation of lm delta t we also know what are the hot streams uh, available in a particular interval so when you look at this interval for example you look at okay this is a hot stream and then you have this uh, sorry this is a hot stream and and in this interval you have two hot streams so you sum their heat contribution and then you get the value of q over hi so to calculate q you use the same equation as q is equal to cp delta t okay so you know the value of q for each of these streams in a particular interval and then you also know the value of h for each of these hot and cold streams uh, because they are given in the table so first you calculate the sum of uh, all the hot streams uh, in interval 1 for example similarly you look at all the hot uh, sorry all the cold streams you calculate their heat uh, requirement in terms of q j is equal to again cp delta t you know the heat transfer coefficient you take the sum of all the cold streams in that interval and then you have the value here and if you use now uh, the equation that I showed you before, the the heat available uh, from hot streams and the heat uh, uh, given to the cold streams, and then you can calculate the area of a particular interval. Okay, and in this case, that area of interval one is 194.2. Similarly, you will calculate for each interval with the same method. You will calculate the area of uh, particular interval and then if you sum up all these intervals you get the total area of the heat exchanger network so we will look at uh, this calculation in much more detail in in problem 10 um, where we will talk about how actually we can calculate all these individual areas in 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 more detail so the next things to area target is the number of units so we can find the number of units uh, we can also call them number of enthalpy intervals because for each enthalpy interval we have one um, unit that needs to exchange heat in all the streams involved in that interval so we can find the number of uh, enthalpy intervals above the pinch and below the pinch so if we look at uh, the number of streams available um, in the in the area above the pinch and you subtract one from it it gives you the number of units above pinch and similarly we can calculate the number of units below the pinch so let's um, have a look here so here for example if we look at this uh, balance composite curve and we know from uh, chapter 7 that the pinch temperature was around 140 150 uh, degrees centigrade so if you look at now in the number of streams so this is the interval uh, 140 to 150 and if you look above the pinch you have one two three four and five streams so if you minus one from um five streams it will be four so if you count the number of intervals one two three four so you can see that you need uh, you have four enthalpy intervals and you need four uh, number of units for uh, this um, area above the pinch and now if you look at below the pinch so you have one stream two three and four so it means that you have three number of units uh, or three number of intervals so if you look at here you have one two and three okay so this kind of um, analysis gives you um, how many number of uh, uh, units you can calculate in a, in, a, in in your process uh, using the same logic we can also calculate the number of shells okay and the number of shells we can calculate based on this equation here and here if you look at n um, n 
shell is the total number of shells in in the in your enthalpy interval k okay and nk is the number of um, shell uh, that you calculated based on number of units and actually this nk comes from the design of uh, shell and tube heat exchanger where you look at uh, different parameters like p r and ft and if your ft is very low uh, then sometimes you like to go from one shell to two shell to to distribute the load and sk is the number of streams in the enthalpy interval k so if you want to just look at one enthalpy interval you just need to multiply nk with sk minus 1 and if you want to calculate the total number of um, shells involved in your whole process, uh, like here, for example, we have the whole process. So we need to then sum up uh, this factor for all the enthalpy intervals. Okay, and that gives us the number of total shells. And by doing that, we have a better idea of uh, what would be the uh, the total energy cost and the total capital cost uh, for the whole process. So that is all for this part. Uh, thank you for your time.